Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to our worship service this morning. Today is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. Today we talk about how God wants real repentance uh, and, and uh, a repentance that leads to true obedience. That sounds awfully law orientated today. But in that understanding of why we do what we, why would we follow the Ten Commandments? Why do we do what God asks us to is because of God's love for us. Our lives will be better. And uh, as, we, as we think on those things and talk about God's love for us, of course, there is no greater love than the love that he gave by giving up his son for our forgiveness. Times that we do not follow his law. We follow the order of service found on page 41 in the front of your hymnary, known as Right One, and we begin this morning with our opening prayer. May the Lord bless your worship this morning. O Lord, our Maker, Redeemer, and Comforter, we are assembled in your presence to hear your holy word. We pray that you to open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through the preaching of your word, we may be taught to repent of our sins, to believe on Jesus in life and death, and to grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Christ's sake. Amen. We continue by singing uh, the, 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 the hymn that is in your bulletin on page six, uh, O Savior, Precious Savior.
Please let rise and let us confess our sins to God and pray. We poor sinners confess to you, O God, not only that we have been conceived and born in sin, but also that throughout life we have often and in many ways offended you, our Lord and Maker, in thought, word, and deed, so that you could, with perfect justice, reject and condemn us for all eternity. Therefore, we come before you with sorrow of heart, in dread and terror of your holy justice and of everlasting death. Our sins are a grievous foe which we should hate in every way as long as we live. O merciful God, you still grant in this, uh, us in this hour to be reminded of your fatherly goodness. According to the promise of your word, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and implore you, dearest Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, our brother, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised again for our justification, forgive us all our sins through faith, which the Holy Spirit increases in our hearts to full assurance. We therefore pray you, O Lord, through your servant, to declare to us the forgiveness of all our sins. We poor sinners are willing to forgive all who have offended against us. We earnestly desire to grow in true godliness. Help us, O God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. O God, the Father in heaven, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, true Comforter, holy and comforting word of our Lord. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lift up your hearts. By the authority of God and of my holy office, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will to one man. All glory be to God on high, who hath our race befriended. To us no harm shall now come nigh, the strife at last is ended. God showeth his good will to men, and peace shall dwell on earth again. Oh, thank him for his goodness. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful, mercifully grant, O God, that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. For without your help, we are unable to please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I invite you now to follow along on the insert to your bulletin, page three, as we read our lessons for today. Our first lesson, which will also serve as our sermon text today, is taken from the fifth chapter of the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah, beginning with the first verse. Let me sing for my loved one a song about my loved one's vineyard. My loved one has a vineyard on a fertile ridge, he dug it up and gathered the stones out of it. 
planted it with the best vines. He built a tower in the middle of it. He also cut a wine press into it. He expected it to produce clusters of sweet grapes, but it produced only sour grapes. So now, you residents of Jerusalem and you men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have already done for it? When I expected it to produce clusters of sweet grapes, why did it produce sour grapes? Now, let me tell you what I will do with my vineyard. I will take away its hedge. It will become a pasture. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled down. I will make it a wasteland. It will not be pruned or hoed, so briars and thorns will shoot up. I will also command the clouds not to pour rain on it. Yes, the vineyard of the Lord of armies is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are the planting that was pleasing to him. He expected justice, but instead there was oppression. He expected righteousness, but there was, oh, but there was an outcry. Here ends our first lesson. We continue on page 5 with the psalm for today, Psalm 25. Our second lesson this morning is taken from the third chapter of Paul's letter to the Philippians, verses 12 through 21. Now that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus also took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it yet, but there is one thing I do. Forgetting the things that are behind and straining toward the things that are ahead, I press on toward the goal. For the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let all of us who are mature continue to think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this to you too. Only let us think the same thing and walk in line with what we already have attained. Brothers, join together in imitating me and in paying attention to those who are walking according to the pattern we gave you. 
to be sure. Many walk as enemies of the cross of Christ, and I told you about them often, and now I am saying it while weeping. Their destruction, their end is destruction. Their God is their appetite, and their glory is in their shame. They are thinking only about earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. We are eagerly awaiting for a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power that enables him to subject all things to himself, he will transform our humble bodies to be like his glorious body. Here ends our second lesson. Please rise for the reading of our gospel lesson taken from the 21st chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning with the 33rd verse. We read these words as follows in Jesus' name. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. He leased it to some tenant farmers and went away on a journey. When the time approached to harvest the fruit, he sent his servant to the tenants to get his fruit. The tenant farmer seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then the landowner sent even more servants than the first time. The tenant farmers treated them the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them. We'll respect my son, he said. But the tenant farmers saw the son, and they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. They took him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. So when the landowner comes, what will he do to those tenant farmers? They told him he will bring those wretches to a wretched end. Then he will lease out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his fruit when it is due. Jesus said to them, Have you never read the scriptures? The stone the builder rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. That is why I tell you the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces its fruit. Here ends the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God be praised for his glad tidings. We now confess our holy Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed found for you on page 46 in the front of your hymnary. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We sing our next hymn, 429.
Our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our text this morning is taken from our first lesson, the fifth chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 7, which we read just a few moments ago. Dear friends, hello redeemed in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's a song. And quite an amazing song. A song about a vineyard. The person who sings the song is the prophet Isaiah. He sings about the Lord's love for his vineyard. The vineyard is the nation of Israel. The vineyard is you. The vineyard is me. Songs are important to us. People sing when they're sad, sing when they're happy. They sing about their love for each other, their love for their country, their love for their God. When we gather for worship, as we are doing here this morning, we sing about God's amazing love for us. Music and poetry combine to bring God's grace and mercy deep into our hearts, into our lives. We sit at the side of those who are dying in the arms of Jesus. We comfort them with song. This morning as we think about Our theme for today, Song About a Vineyard. Let us, first of all, listen to this song about God's love for us. And secondly, listen also to God's concern for us. The prophet Isaiah says, Let me sing for my loved one a song about my loved one's vineyard. Then follows the song. My loved one has a vineyard on a fertile ridge. So Isaiah here is singing of the Lord God, whom he loves as someone who has a vineyard on a fertile ridge. Now, when I look at these words, in the original Hebrew, at at first they seem to make no sense at all. The Hebrew literally says, a horn with a source of oil. And then, upon further examination, you realize how beautiful that this is as a description of a vineyard. The vineyard is like a horn or outcropping of rock. Especially in in the Mediterranean, where, where everything is rocky. You would... Plant your, 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 your grapes on the side of a hill or an outcropping of rock so that they had something to grab onto. And this horn is filled with fertile soil that can produce olive trees and olives dripping with oil. If there were, was ever a place to create a vineyard, to plant choice vines, it was on the outcropping of this rock. With rich soil, water flowing over the limestone hills and finding its way into the subsoil. Perfect for growing olive trees. Perfect for growing grapes. The Lord chose the nation of Israel to be his special vineyard. Isaiah sings more about the Lord and his vineyard. He says, He dug it up and cl- he dug it up and cleared the stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it. He cut out a wine press. 
And so we see that the, the field here was cleared of all of the rocks. A wall was built around it to protect it. There was even a tower that could be used to watch over the vineyards as the grapes begin to ripen. No animals, no thieves would get into that vineyard and steal the succulent bunches of grapes. The choicest vines were chosen to be planted in that vineyard, perfectly paired for climate and soil to produce the highest quality and quantity of grapes. He built a wine press in eager anticipation of the bumper crop of grapes. He cut and he chiseled it out of the solid rock to efficiently get enough or to get the most juice from the grapes. Listen to Isaiah once again as he sings this song of the vineyards in the streets of Jerusalem. He sings to help these people realize that they were the vineyard of the Lord. Rich with blessings. If ever there was a nation on earth that had its horn filled with riches of God's grace and mercy, it was the Old Testament Jewish people. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 4, Theirs are the adoption of sons, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. God called Abraham and told him, I will make you a great nation. Israel was a great nation because the Lord blessed it with material prosperity in a land flowing with milk and honey. He gave them the promise of the Messiah who would come from one of their descendants. He gave them the prophets who spoke to them about the future Messiah in clear words that a child could understand. He gave them temple worship with animals sacrificed at altars to picture the blood of Jesus that would be shed for their sin. He gave them music, singing, unlike any other nation or people on the face of the earth, the famous songs of Zion. When people gathered in the temple by the thousands, they lifted up their voices and worshiped to the Lord. When you heard it, it made you tremble with joy. When we think of this special chosen vineyard, we think of the blessing that has come into our lives. The Lord your God chose you be his beloved vineyard. He chose you to be attached to Jesus, the vine, even though you don't deserve it. Ephesians chapter 1 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. The Lord your God has richly blessed you with his word, filling your life with promises that never fail. Thousands of promises in the book that we call the Bible. You have been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is hard not to burst out in singing with the psalmist, bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name, bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. How eagerly the Lord anticipates you producing fruits of faith, of love for him. Ephesians 2.10 says, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared in advance so that we would walk in them. Friends, we are God's vineyard. 
So this song from the vineyard goes from singing about love and mercy to singing about deep concern. It says in our text, he expected it to produce clusters of sweet grapes, but it produced only sour grapes. Now, the word used in Hebrew here is used in other places in the Old Testament to describe something that is stinky and rotten. How bad was the fruit that God's people produced in their lives? Remember the people who left the land of Egypt walked through the waters of the Red Sea, ate manna from heaven, and drank water that miraculously flowed from the rocks. And when it came time to enter the promised land, they rebelled against God. They rejected him. And a whole generation rebelled against God. After the new generation went into the promised land, it took only one generation to reject the Lord and go after Baal worship. At the time these words of Isaiah were written, people in Jerusalem would worship the Lord in the temple in the morning and worship Baal up in the groves at night in the orgiastic rituals that were part of that cultic worship. When Jesus came, the beloved Messiah, the seed of Abraham, who would bless all nations, these people refused to believe that he was the Messiah. What does the Lord say about a vineyard that stubbornly refused to produce good fruit? He said, I will take away its hedge, and it will become a pasture. I will break down its walls, and it will be trampled down. I will make it a wasteland. I will not be, I will not, it will not be pruned or hoed. The briars and thorns will shoot up. I will also command the clouds not to pour rain on it. The Lord did that with Israel. He withdrew the rains that came across the hills from the Mediterranean Sea. He took down the protective shield that kept the enemies from over, over, overrunning the land. He took his people into captivity in the land of Babylon. God kept the covenant that was made with Israel to bless them if they carried out his plans for him and cursed them for turning their backs away from him. Have you ever noticed how the gospel is no longer flourishing in the land where it was once found in such rich abundance? Take England, for example. Great cathedrals. Beautiful churches are found throughout London and the rest of England. A survey in 2021 revealed that only 605,000 people attend worship in England on any given Sunday. Germany, the land of the Reformation, is only slightly better at 660,000. The great cathedrals that could house thousands of members easily are now museums, more than the house of worship. When I went to visit, I believe it was Germany, I've been to England and Germany, but I think it was in Germany. We went to visit, and we were waiting to tour the inside of the cathedral that we were at. But we had to wait because the service was still going. As we waited, it was about five minutes later, the doors opened, and they ushered the people out. There were seven people in attendance that day. 
massive cathedral. The Lord looks for good grapes as a fruit of the message of the gospel. And there is only bad grapes, rotten grapes, stinky grapes. The Lord our God is concerned, deeply concerned about the fruit that we are producing in our lives as branches connected to Jesus, the true vine. Not all grapes produced in your life this past week have been good grapes. Some have been stinky and rotten. Paul saw some of those stinky grapes in his life when he wrote in Romans 7, 4, or 7, this is, this, the desire to do good is present within me, but I am not able to carry it out. So I fail to do the good I want to do. Instead, the evil I do not want to do, that is what I keep doing. Now we can thrust the finger up in the air and point to a nation of Israel for trying to worship Baal and other gods alongside the Lord Almighty. But always at the point at which we condemn others, we similarly see stinky grapes in our lives. Well, so many things. So many things occupied our thoughts our worries, our concerns, and even our passions more than the Lord our God. The Lord our God is concerned about the fruit that is being produced in your life and in mine. He is so concerned that he uses portions of Scripture such as this to help us examine our hearts and our minds to see our need or help from Jesus. And Isaiah sings, Yes, the vineyard of the Lord of armies is the house of Israel. The men of Judah are the planting that was pleasing to him. He expected justice, but instead there was only oppression. He expected righteousness, but there was an outcry. So the Hebrew words here are a word play of sort. In Hebrew, God looked for mishpat, which means justice, but found only mispach, close, but it means oppression. He looked for zedekah, righteousness, and found only zaka, cries of distress. When the Lord looks at my heart and he looks at your heart, he is deeply concerned about those sinful thoughts and the sinful actions that we overlook, tolerate, justify. I thought this was supposed to be a love song. Here the Lord is calling me to repentance. He is calling me to examine my own life, examine my own heart, he wants me to see what's wrong in my life, where I have failed, and where I have fallen short of his glory. He wants me to see what's wrong with my heart. Yes. But it is because he loves me. Because knowing this, I can come to him for that forgiveness that is mine and yours, found only in his son, Jesus. That is the deepest love. And here is the song the Lord wants us to sing, which actually we sang already. Chief of sinners, though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me died that I might live on high, lives that I might never die. As the branch, the vine, I am his. 
is mine. You are the Lord's vineyard. You are attached to Christ, the true vine. You are the branches that bear fruit that is clean through the blood of Jesus that is shed for you. Today, tomorrow, throughout your life, you are a privilege to bear the fruit of Christ, to give glory to God and to your Lord. God be with you. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. His peace be with you. Amen. We continue on page 48 with the prayer of the church. Everlasting and merciful God, we beseech you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to have mercy upon us and to hear our prayer. Look in mercy upon your church, protect it and sanctify it by your truth. May your word be taught in its purity and your sacraments be rightly administered. Grant unto your church faithful pastors who shall declare your truth with power and shall live according to your will. Send forth laborers into your harvests and open the door of faith unto all unbelievers and unto the people of Israel. In mercy, remember the enemies of your church and grant to them repentance unto life. O God, in the multitude of your mercy, hear us in the truth of your salvation. Let your protecting hand be over our country and over all who travel. Prosper what is good among us. Bring to naught every evil counsel and purpose. Protect and bless your servants. The President of the United States, the Governor of this state, our judges and magistrates and all in authority, the men and women of our armed forces who work hard to keep this country free. Fit them all for their high calling by the gift of your spirit of wisdom and fear, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy. Lord, be our helper. According to your promise, O God, be the defender of the widow and the father of the orphan. Relieve and comfort the sick and the sorrowful. Graciously help those who are assaulted by the devil and who are in peril of death. Be the strength of those who are suffering for the sake of Christ's holy name. Grant that we may live together in peace and prosperity. Bestow upon us good and seasonable weather and bless us with upright Christian counsel in all that we undertake. O Lord, be with all in trouble. Hear their prayers to the honor of your name. We especially commend your care in keeping this your congregation, which you have bought with a great price. Keep from us all offenses. Bind us together in the unity of your holy love. Grant that the little ones who are baptized in your name may be brought up in your fear, and at your table give to those who there commune with you peace and life everlasting. Let all rejoice who trust in you. Let them shout for joy because you defend them. Be merciful, O God, to all according to your great love in Christ Jesus our Lord. And when our final hour shall come, grant us a blessed departure from this world, and on the last day, a resurrection to your glory. Amen. Grant us your peace, O Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We bring our offering forward. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gifts may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. May we, thy bounties thus as stewards true receive, gladly and joyfully give what is yours, now and forever. Amen.
We continue with our next hymn, which is hymn number 493. You may be seated. Please rise for the collect. We pray the collect in the bottom of page 57. Let us give thanks and pray. We thank you, Lord God, the Father, that you have given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you have borne in your sacred body all our sins, and by your blood have blotted out all our transgressions. We thank you, Lord, the Holy Spirit, that you have created in our hearts true faith, that we know of nothing to trust for our salvation except Jesus Christ and him crucified. O oh God, grant us your grace, that we may perfectly believe that all our sins are forgiven for the sake of the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so enlighten us by your Holy Spirit, that in the power of our Redeemer's death, we may day by day put off sin and never forsake the Lord Jesus Christ until we see him face to face in life eternal. We ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated for our final hymn, 420.
Help us, O God, by your Holy Spirit, that for the sake of Jesus Christ, keep your word in pure hearts, we thereby may be strengthened in faith, perfected in holiness, and comforted in life and death. Amen. Good morning again to all of you. A couple of announcements. Um, uh, draw your attention to a few things in the bulletin. Otherwise, read them over for yourself. Um, uh, we have, uh, you are invited, first of all, first of all, actually, I should say that we have the Everready Circle tomorrow uh, evening at 6 o'clock. All the ladies are uh, welcome and encouraged to attend. Um, and also, this Saturday, um, we are... Um, uh, you're all invited to come to our Harvest Fellowship. It is a, a chance for us to get to know each other. Uh, a lot of times when we do things, we tend to just stay in our own family groups. But we have a larger family, uh, the family of faith that is Holton Evangelical Lutheran Church. So this is a chance for you to uh, get to know your fellow church members. Uh, we'll be having, a, it goes from 4 until 8, and we'll have, have a time for fellowship, uh, t- social hour, we'll have a, some dinner, we'll have uh, some games and activities and things like that, uh, possibly a bonfire. Um, we'd love, uh, love to uh, see you all there. We do have a sign-up sheet uh, in the back. There's a few things that we could still use help with. Um, please, uh, please, con- please consider helping if you'd like. Um, we do, we do need the help. Um, and uh, please uh, look at those upcoming uh, fundraisers from the Everybody Circle. Those are both uh, uh, coming up here soon as well. Um, our quarter, quarterly voters meeting will be uh, the end of the month, October 29th, and we will have the reports are out for you by next Sunday. Those are my announcements. Did you have an announcement? Yeah, just further to the uh, sign-up sheet, it's to the right of the coffee. So there's still a lot of things that, um, that we need uh, donations for or some support with. Um, we've kind of busted it up into three groups before dinner, dinner, and the after-dinner activities. Um, and we've kind of assigned people to take care of that. The last one, at the after-dinner activities, we're looking for a volunteer to kind of spearhead that. Um, so if you're willing to do something like that, um, Sign up for that, um, and then uh, yeah, there's there's more things there. If you think there's something else that is missing there, um, kind of let me know or or write it on there, and um, and we are gonna try to have a meeting of those that are um, gonna help planning this tomorrow at seven. So I think that would work right after the ladies or shortly after, hopefully. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of update on that. Are there any other announcements this morning? Then at this time, we'll have our Sunday school teachers and Sunday school students go first. And God's blessings go with you uh, throughout this week. And beyond. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Um.